स्टैंड फॉर कार्ल मार्क्स एंड लेनिन जोजफ नेपोलियन स्टैंड फॉर जोजफ स्टैलिन एंड स्नोबॉल स्टैंड फॉर लियन ट्रॉस्की इन द नॉवल ओके नाउ he also has some characteristics uh, uh, say uh, parallel with or taken uh, from lenin lenin yeah here lenin because you know he is positive and lenin was also uh, lenin was also very positive a uh, good he had a good impact a good influence uh, on the people people remember him you know uh, with uh, reverence so he has some traits uh, of lenin as well If, 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 even after his expulsion, he is remembered by other animals, though uh, silently and secretly. Trotsky was a political theorist. Who was uh, Trotsky? He was a political theorist, revolutionary, and a leader of the Red Army. Okay, he is associated with Red Army. He was a leader of the Red Army. Remember this. You know, when if you if, you know you you are going to doubly enjoy the novel. if you read uh, the history of russian revolution because this is the backdrop this is the backdrop the backdrop of the uh, novel and if you read the history of russian revolution just a brief one okay which runs into 3 4 pages you would have an idea and then you are going to enjoy the novel uh, more i said doubly yeah, enjoy it so trotsky i told you was a who was trotsky was a political theorist revolutionary who is a revolutionary who brings about revolution who brings about a revolution right and 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 he was a leader of which army white army or blue army or green army red army red army very good yeah after the revolution he was involved in the russian foreign affairs and policy making okay he opposed stalin's decisions and eventually was forced into exile on the soviet union uh, soviet union in uh, in 1929 yes because he did not you know in in the beginning after the death of lenin they started uh, ruling uh, say russia together in a way as political leaders but trotsky wouldn't agree with everything stalin planned and so he started opposing the policies of joseph stalin and joseph stalin uh, had him exiled from uh, russia then you know he he settled elsewhere say soviet union you may say so it, he was exiled from the soviet union he resided in uh, resided in mexico okay where did he reside after his uh, expulsion his exile in mexico so he and he was assassinated by a soviet agent in uh, 1940 when was he assassinated these are the important dates that's why i'm saying you you, know, you just read uh, uh, the history of russian uh, revolution the abish one or uh, you can read the summary this, this is available on the internet read then you will know these dates and all and you you will know the significance of russian revolution so he was assassinated by a soviet agent in 1940 1940 good most of the family members uh, he left in the soviet union were arrested and killed this is what happens the, 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 this is you know something uh, very usual if 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 a person is caught uh, he is hanged and his family members are also like tormented uh, and same thing happened with uh trotsky's family also and he also you know uh, we see there in animal form snowball has left but um some uh, small animals like um like hens and all they 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 they, they are uh, treated as traitors and they are blamed for uh, um having a league with the snowball for having a connection with the snowball and that is why they are killed who are killed the hens in the novel are killed so is you may say that they were they, they were a kind of family of snowball and in real life also we see trotsky's family was killed uh, the members were left behind 
by him they ensued with the union and they were killed by the men of uh, Joseph Stalin. He must have got them killed, surely. Okay. So who is the next one? Old Major, Snowball, and then you have Skula, yes. Skula is the mouthpiece of Napoleon. A very eloquent, a very clever pig, you know. Who is the mouthpiece? Mouthpiece is a person who puts forth the ideas of the leader. Napoleon is the leader and he is the one who shares his ideas with the other animals. So he is a mouthpiece. He is uh, like another uh, of the three most important pigs. Who are the most important pigs? We have Old Major, we have Snowball, we have Napoleon and besides the, them, the, um, the other most important pig, I mean, uh, is Skula. So like Snowball, he is clever and a good speaker. I told you he is very eloquent and he is uh, excellent in persuading the other animals. Leaders have, have to be good at this and he has that, you know, gift of the gap. He speaks well, he is able to persuade other animals. Means he, he is the one, you know, who can turn white into black and black into white. This kind of animal he is. He ends up being Napoleon's spokesperson. Mouthpiece. A spokesperson and mouthpiece are synonyms. He delivers, delivers his orders, exp, explains his choices and tells lies to support Napoleon. Okay. He, he, he is, a, you may say, a blind follower of uh, Napoleon and whatever Napoleon says, whether it's right or wrong, he shares it with other animals uh, and adds extra lies also in order to justify uh, the sayings of uh, the plans of Napoleon. It is also hinted that uh, he reports back to Napoleon about what are the other animals say. That is why you know the, 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 some animals are massacred, some animals are killed. Why are they killed? Because you know he goes back to Napoleon and he would say that such and such animal <coughs> uh, um, did not agree with you or was uh, whispering against you, things like that. He persuades the other animals to support Napoleon. This, this, this is his main intention, to persuade animals to support Napoleon, no matter how bad his rule is. Means Napoleon has to be accepted irrespective of all rule or all, all, all bad things. He lies, he twists the truth, distorts it and takes advantage of uh, the animal's bad memories. Because other animals, you know, sheep, goat and all, they are not very intelligent animals. So what does he take? Uh, what does he do? He takes undue advantage, advantage of their bad memory. <coughs> Yes. So tell me one line about him. Skula. He's Who is he? Spokesperson a... of Napoleon. He's a he's a spokesperson of very good uh, Napoleon. Can you tell me one more, one line more? <coughs> Louder. Uh, he conveys the messages of uh, from Napoleon to other animals, orders from Napoleon to other animals. Mm -hmm. He's a good speaker. Like Napoleon or like any other politician. Like Napoleon? No, Napoleon is not a good speaker. Hmm? Who is a good speaker? Old Snowball. Major Snowball. Uh, was a good speaker. Who is no more? Snowball has been a good speaker. And he uh, is the best speaker, you may say. The most eloquent. Why? Because it is said in the novel that he can turn black into white and white into black. He represents propaganda, you may say. What does he represent? Propaganda. He represents media. Okay, the present media that you have. 
the, the media that you have electronic paper or whatever that time electronic media wasn't there but the paper media was there okay print media was there i mean so he he, he in a way represents media the rhetoric uh, and loud media that is meant to arouse emotions and sentiments of people to win the support to win their support what 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 does media do hmm? come on what is the role of media to glorify something or to political leader okay political they they are in league with the political leaders the ruling parties and whatever ruling parties whatever the leaders of ruling parties say they just uh, you know justify that they, they do not you know in fact they are supposed to give a true picture of uh, uh, things unbiased they, they, unbiased. they are they're supposed to show reality but do they show reality no, no they do not that is why that is why you know like uh, uh, in the current scenario in the present situation people do not have faith people have lost faith in in the media and i feel you know the media wasn't good even uh, during the Rus the time of russian revolution also or say 100 uh, years ago Be because spuler uh, is based on propaganda is based on media is based on rhetoric uh, and what does uh, what, what, what what do these people do these small pieces this spokesperson they arouse emotions and senti sentiments of people to win the support of the people to win their favors so these are the pics okay one more is there minimus is there minimus you know we are not going to discuss in detail because it's not that important minimus is yet another uh, another pig here in this line yeah an important pig uh, for he's a poet he's important only because he's a poet who writes the second and the third anthems, national anthems of animal farm after Beast of England. You know, Beast of England was the first national anthem. It was it, it was called as first anthem. And who was the one who shared this anthem with the other animals? Old Major, Beast of England, Beast of uh, Ireland. And who used to sing this anthem? Old Major tells that his mother used to sing this and the other souls hmm? that, that was the first now you know when uh, napoleon has his rule this uh, uh, anthem is banned beast of england is banned and he has composed other anthems two uh, anthems which are sung by the animals and he he writes you know uh, poems in praise of um, napoleon even these anthems are written to glorify, glorify Napoleon in favor of Napoleon is it okay so he creates poems and songs in praise of Napoleon so these are the four pigs that we have, they are five pigs that we have discussed they are the they play an important role now we may switch over you know I, I have classified them okay remember them if you remember them this way you can remember all the characters it is easy to remember you can remember pigs, then horses, and then human beings, and then other animals. Benjamin, Muriel, sheep, and all. So here, uh, among the horses, who is the most important one? Boxer. Boxer. So we shall discuss boxer first. Who is the boxer? Is he a... Yes, boxer is a horse. Australian. And he is a tragic hero, you know. He's a tragic hero. I, I call, it, call him a tragic hero. He's a tragic hero. The, the way you have, you know, in, uh, in Shakespearean uh, tragedies. Who is a tragic hero? Tragic hero is the one, you know, uh, like, uh, like who meets a tragic uh, end, who meets a tragic end, and who wins your sympathy, who wins your pity. He's a tragic hero. So he wins our sympathy, he wins our pity, we sympathize with him. We pity his fate and that is why we call him a tragic hero. So he is a tragic hero of the animal form. He is a hard worker, very diligent, okay, strong, very huge, loyal and he is also very caring. He cares for other animals. He doesn't care for himself but he cares for others. 
despite his poor health, bad health, you know, he keeps on working. He doesn't stop his work. He keeps on. He continues working. And that is why, you know, he ruins his health. He also fights bravely in both the significant battles against the humans. Can you tell me the battles? Yes, come on. He, the, the two, two important battles were fought. Two battles, there, there were only two battles and both were very important. And they were fought against the human beings. The first one was the battle of Kaushet and the second one was the battle of Windmill. And in both these battles, he fights and fights very bravely. Okay? Very bravely. Unfortunately, I must say, he's too loyal. He's too good. You know, too much goodness is also not good. This we see you know, in the context of uh, boxer, in the context of this horse. So he's too loyal. The pigs take uh, undue advantage of this and extract uh, hard work from him until he collapses. Means they, they do not sympathize uh, with him. They do not pity him. That uh, boxer isn't well, so he should not. He should be exempted from hard work. He should uh, be given due rest, proper rest. But they do not. As long as he is uh, capable of working, working, he is taking hard work. Okay. So what what, what do you see here? He is exploited by the pigs. He is exploited by Napoleon. He is exploited by Schuyler. And you know, when he collapses, like when he is of no use, they sell him to the horse slaughterer, to a necker, to a butcher, so that they can buy more whiskey. Now, now this, this is very pathetic. Is it not full of pathos? Whenever something goes wrong, he blames himself and vows to work even harder. He's, he is so genuine, so nice that you know, if something goes wrong, like you know, uh, like in, in the month of November, there was a heavy storm on uh, a heavy storm, and as a result of that heavy storm, the windmill was destroyed. But he, you know, he, he would say, "Oh, nothing to worry about. I would work harder. I would work harder." He's, he he blames himself sometimes if things do, do not work well. He would say, "Well, okay, this was my fault." Now I I, I I would work better. I would work harder. And Napoleon is always right. Like his favorite uh, favorite uh, slogans or sayings are Napoleon is always right. Number one, and I will work hard. You can see this is important. He, I'm just writing it. Yeah, he, he he keeps saying this. I'll work harder. And Napoleon in you, who is a thorough rake, uh, 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 say a villain, yet he says Napoleon is always right. Napoleon is always right. So th these are, you know, his favorite sayings, his slogans, you may say. So such a person, you know, who is so nice, so genuine, who is so devoted, a, del a diligent worker, is sold to a, a slaughterer, hmm? a necker, a butcher. So th th this, this thing is very pathetic. In fact, you know, when you read it, um, like you cannot stop your tears rolling down your cheeks. They won't. This is, this, this is something very pathetic, the most pathetic in the entire novel. So, so he is the strongest animal and uh, could easily fight off the pigs and dogs, they are, they, they, are, they are the ones, you know, who exploit everybody. All the animals, pigs and dogs, he is the strongest. So he could easily fight them off. He could easily defeat them. He could easily, like, um, you know, like, uh, thrash them, yet he does not. Why? Because um, uh, he is too used to taking orders. He is very obedient, very hardworking. He is very, uh, say, Obsequious, like, like you know, he takes orders and he is used to taking orders, so he cannot go against the animals, the rulers, I mean, the pigs and dogs. He is a law, he is a loyal and dedicated cart horse. There are two cart horses here, Clover and Hope and Boxer. So he is one of the cart horses, a dedicated cart horse. He is the strongest worker among the animals, okay, the most 
uh, you know, he, yeah, I mean, uh, he is very huge as far as the size is concerned, very, very, very brave and also the strongest, very, very strong. He is loyal to Napoleon. Napoleon calls him his com comrade, yet betrays him. Just think of, it's like you do Brutus, it's like that, when he sold to, uh, sold to the necker, the horse slaughterer. Who is his, who is his companion, uh, boxer's companion? Benjamin. Benjamin. No, Benjamin, yeah, you may say Benjamin is friends with, but Clover, Clover is actual. In fact, get him is a real companion in the same. Clover is a mayor. So Boxer and his companion Clover represent the working class. Working class during the Russian Revolution. You working class, like these workers, these laborers, you know, they work very hard. Yet they do not get sufficient food. Means they, 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 they are not able to meet their requirements. They, they, they are working. Yet they do not get proper food and proper uh, resources to lead uh, a satisfactory life, I must say. I am not talking about luxurious life, not even a satisfactory life. So, uh, who, who do they represent? Who do they stand for? They represent for the, they, they stand for the, or represent the working class. Working, working class, liberals, farmers, you may say. The poor ones, they, they were exploited by, by the Tsar Nicholas II. Yeah, Tsar Nicholas II, remember this. Tsar Nicholas. Tsar, you know, like some spell, you, you can spell it both ways. Uh, either, either this or this, both are correct. 